Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix up some Nintendo toys. Not video game consoles or video games, but just toys. Now this one here is going to be particularly interesting because this was before Nintendo started doing anything to do with video games, I believe. So in this one we've got something to do with Pokemon, not too sure what it is. I bought it off eBay, it's supposed to fire marbles but it's not working. But this one here I think will be more interesting. So this was sent through and I thought, oh I wonder what this is. And then as soon as I seen Jersey Post there, and this was the telltale sign, the Vincey smiley face. I knew full well that this had to be from Elliot, the retro future. Here we have a periscope. Yes, a periscope. So I believe this is from the early 70s. He bought two of these, I think, and he's going to do a video on his one. And this one I think is a little bit more beat up, so he sent it through to me. So I think it's going to be an interesting video. I don't know how challenging it's going to be, hence the reason why I'm doing the two items in the one video here. So that, there we have it. Let's uh, unwrap these over at the blue mats and we'll see if they can be fixed or not. So it's my mate Vince from the future and unfortunately this is working fine. So this is supposed to be a fix it video so there's no point in showing you trying to fix something which is already working. So basically I put the batteries in here. I think the person just didn't know how to use it. If you press this button at the front, a light comes on. If we press this button, it moves around clockwise. If we press this button, it moves around counterclockwise. And then when you get to the Pokemon that you want, you can load it by doing this it puts down that little thing at the front and then we can do this lever to fire and the balls uh, come flying out you can then go round again and the next one will drop in and then you can fire that one if you don't want the next one to drop in you can press it in and that pops up and then we can move around either that way or that way to get to the one you want you can also have a little window here that you can see them and then out and fire and here are all the ones in here so it's a nicely made thing and they're all labeled up with different pokemon on here right let's move on to the periscope which is the one i'm looking forward to most now while i'm on doing this let's give a shout out to the my mate vince massive and this month that consists of saturnine cinema operational 117 kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Stephen Kilgore, and Scooter Lou. So massive thanks to all of those there. Wow, look at this thing. Automatic Ultrascope, up, down. It's absolutely filthy. Properly, properly filthy. 1971, oh, look at that. By Nintendo, made in Japan. Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, so let's... Uh... Oh, hold on now, so we have to undo the screws and then do that to open it. Right, okay, let's uh, undo the screws. I presume this is where the batteries go. So I'm thinking because it's from this era that the toy will actually be made to a certain standard. I think it probably will be okay. The sort of thing that somebody would have got for uh, birthday or Christmas, you know? Oh, look, that one's, that one's a massive one there. Oh, it goes right the way through to the nut on the other side. Oh, sorry, it's here. I thought that would have been the batteries. Okay, it's just here. Right, let's get two C-cell batteries. I wonder if that was on a spring originally. Right, so let's see what it does. Oh, here it goes. Go on. Okay, and it stops. Does it go back down? It's more powerful on the way down, isn't it? Hmm. I don't think there's a cutoff. I think you you just stop it when it does that. Oh, we're going for it now. 
Go on. Right, I'm trying to go back down now. Right, well it's certainly not happy and it doesn't want to go back down. Even when I'm giving it a helping hand, it doesn't want to go down. But I think you can see the idea of it here. Oh my God. Honestly, it's just it's so dirty. And also that plastic looks like it's been knocked over that side. But, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you look through here. There's a little mirror here and it bounces off the mirror here. So obviously you can look over a wall or something like that. Anyway, let's take it apart. This thing needs one hell of a clean. And as well as that, I'm not sure what the motors and stuff are going to look like on the inside. But let's start with taking it apart here. So I've already done those ones there. Let's do these ones here. Nice little uh, dust bunny there. Come on, come out. Okay, here we go. Right, so what does this bit do? Oh, look, you can angle it here, a bit of fine tuning. Oh, and that's how that works there. Okay, so that goes over that there. It's nicely made, isn't it? Let's take out this side as well. We're free. We've got that bit free. So we can take that apart later and give it a good clean. We've got a couple of screws there. Worry about that in a bit. Ah, oh, dearie me. Oh, look at this. This is like the inside of a tape measure, you know, a retractable tape measure. Okay, so that wraps around there. What we got here? Not sure where that goes. Ah, so the tape measure goes all the way up to here, this part here. So I think what's happened is I think this is dirt related and now obviously it's got itself all mangled up as well. Got to be a bit careful here because that might be under a little bit of tension when that comes apart. So I suppose we should try to undo it from here and then that will want to, well it's not going to go back any more now because you see it's all bun bunched up here. Let's undo it from here. Okay, so that's off there. So now, uh, yeah, I think I don't think that's under tension now. That should be free to go all the way, all the way down. Yeah. So now this is this is free to move. Well, we can give that a good clean. So these look like they're on rubber rollers to grip onto the tape. And it's on a spring here to, uh, there you go, look. You can see to, to give the tape some traction. Got a motor here, and this is the spool. Wonder how that comes undone. Got to be a bit careful here. I don't want to create a load of work for myself. Is this going to come out? Well, why won't that tape come out there, I wonder? Here we go. We've got the wires here, obviously. Right, okay, well, we know that will come out. Let's not worry about this tape at the moment. Let's have a look now. So to get this apart here, can you see we have to undo all these little clips in here, they've kind of been twisted.
Whoa. Right, so that's, uh, oh, hold on. Ah, uh-oh. That's this side that's come out, not that side. So how does that attach onto, I've got to work out how that goes onto there. And also, I think this tape will all have to be bent back into place. Oh, that must just clip in here, yeah, like so. Oh, okay, yeah, nice and straightforward. So, this tape is made to be replaced. Well, I mean, sorry, it's made to be put together. I don't think this toy's been designed for parts to be really replaced on it. Here we go. Right, let's see what is happening here. Oh, okay. That's on one side of the battery. So for example, the negative or the positive, and this one here, this little plate is on the other side of the battery. You see it goes through here to the, the prongs at the bottom here, yep. Oh, okay, that's actually confused me quite a bit, but basically what's happening is, see we have metal here and metal here at the end, and you can see that these wires go off to the motor. So for example, if we were to put three volts positive here, and negative here, the motor is going to spin one way. If we were to put three volts positive here and negative here, the motor will spin the other way. So if we rest this here, like so, this metal thing is making contact with the positive from the battery because these go to the battery terminals underneath, this one here and also this one here. And also this is con conducting through here, okay? So if we were to get the uh, meter, you will see that if I go between here and here, we will have three volts. Yeah. Okay, so this one here is the negative, and this one here is the positive. 2.8 volts, my batteries are slightly low. Yep. Yeah. Now, when we put this on, it's joining this side or this side to the negative of the battery here. So for example now, when we go up this way here, it's joining this black wire onto this side. And when we go this way, it's joining this side on to this side, so the red wire onto that side. So you can mimic it by basically uh, using a bit of wire instead. So if we go here and onto here, we're doing the same thing now as this metal frame. And if I put quite a bit of pressure in the middle and go this way, you can see it's moving one way, and now if I go the other way, which is now going to be this side, and lean down that way, it's now going the other way. Right, well, we know the motor's working okay. You can see in here we've got a load of gears, and you can see it's very dirty. Let me zoom right in. It's very dirty where the paint has been coming off the actual tape, but that's nice and just like a sticky rubber. This is the motor here, and it's just going through a series of gears to, I suppose, to make it turn slower, but with a lot more torque. So there's quite a lot of power. It's quite a lot of power in this. It's all metal gears, which is nice. So I haven't got to deal with those annoying 80s toys before the white plastic gears and 90s. Yeah, it's, uh, it does look like a very nicely made toy and if I was to take a guess I, I wouldn't say that this was particularly cheap when it came out and I think we will be able to fix up this tape I think once I clean it and just get rid of that little kink there I think we'll be able to get this working again let's turn our attention to this quickly before we do the washing because bits bits of it in here will need cleaning as well, well I'm not sure if this is actually going to come apart or not I think it will because we have little clips here so let's undo the screws at the back Just lifting those tabs out there. Oh, this rubber's gone a little bit hard, but it should be okay. Right, that's a part there. Oh yes, this is gonna come apart. There we go. You can see all the dust and dirt in here. Oh, and that's bouncing the light off. Can you see? It's going at it's going at an angle here and an angle here to the eyepiece. Oh, that's just a bit of plastic there. 
yeah, so that has gone discolored. I'm going to leave it though because that's how it was. You know, this is let's keep it original. But yeah, originally that would have been a lot more see-through than that. But you can see now I can clean all these little mirrors here, get everything nice and clean. Right, I think I need to just basically dunk everything in the bath. So I've got all the bits in the bath now. I'm going to add some shower gel and loads of hot water and just give everything a nice good soak and give it a clean with a toothbrush. Now I'm just going to get scrubbing. This is probably going to take a good 30 minutes or so. Well, I'm going to have to get something a little bit more rough for this, a little bit more coarse, because there really is some horrible staining going on here. Okay, I've scrubbed, 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 and scrubbed a bit more, and now it's much cleaner than it was. So now I need to rinse it all off with this, and then I have to dry each of them with a hairdryer to make sure they're fully dry. Let's just rinse it now. So here we have it and it's all dry now. And it's come out really good. I think when we put it back together, it will look like a different toy. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm really impressed with the quality of this toy. I mean, this here looks like it's all aluminium. So everything just seems to be incredibly well made. So uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do now is the gears, I'm gonna clean out the gears a little bit. I need to clean up the tape and then I'm gonna oil the pivots of the gears again. Hopefully when we put it back together, it might work. Well, so we know the batteries are three volts, so what I'm gonna do is, because they're in series, 1.5 plus 1.5, I'm gonna put this on here now, and I just want the uh, tape to work its way up and down a few times. And now I'm gonna go the other way. I'm just using my bench power supply to put the three volts into here, yeah? Now hopefully that will work all the oil around the place. Well, what's nice is if you look here, your eyes are looking through here, because obviously we have our eyes as humans far apart, but on this one, they've been brought together. So what happens is we've got a bev beveled mirror here, like a 45 degree mirror here, and then another mirror here. So the light goes here, here, and then here. So when you're looking through here, you can see through it, but you're not seeing it through here. You can't see my finger now, but you can see my finger now because I'm under that bit there. Yeah, can you see it there? So watch it come into frame, there. But look where my finger is, under this bit here. So all it's doing is bringing your eyes a lot closer together, I presume, so it can then focus on the mirror rather than being apart there. So it's quite nice, isn't it? Well, that went back together a lot easier than I thought, but I still don't actually know if it's gonna work or not. So let's pop the batteries in and then uh, see how it behaves. But look at that bit there. That definitely wasn't doing that before. Oh, so nice. 
Right, I'll show you properly in a minute. Let me just see if it's going to coil itself up. Ah, it's not. It is going up. I'll have to show you in a minute. I'm just going to give it a helping hand. See if with a helping hand if it will go. No. So it, it goes up. Right, why is this not going back down? Yeah, it's not liking any sort of resistance at all. So, now I know more what's going on, we might have a chance of uh, fixing it. Let's think about this. I'm sure when you have like a retractable tape, the spring is in here, yep. And if you have a look, it definitely looks like there's something in here. And also this like mounting here, mounting holes look a bit weird as well. I'm wondering if there should be a spring in here which has come loose. Because I'm thinking that this should always be under tension and then the motor pulls the periscope out, but then this wants to bring it back in. And because this is spring loaded, because it's been wound by the very fact that the motor's pulled it out, it wants to reel this in. So this is like feeding it and this is just allowing it to go. Because at the moment this is doing all the pushing and this is doing nothing. How can it spool on there? It can't, can it? If it's physically impossible to spool on there. So this has to have some sort of spring on the inside of it. So maybe that's what the problem is all along and not the dirt, even though this thing was filthy. So now I just don't know how I'm going to uh, get in here. There we go. Okay, so that bit goes on top. Now we have this bit here. I would love to get this fixed. I've, uh, I really do like it. Not that it will ever be used. I just like the, just like the way it's been put together. And the fact it's Nintendo. That's kind of a bit of history right there because Nintendo is such a massive company now, earning so much money. And to think that, you know, this was just way before any of the video games. Right, please let something be in here. Oh, listen. Ah, oh, do you know what it might be like? Like a mainspring off a watch. Definitely something in here. And why have we got a groove here? Why have we got a groove like that? There's no need, is there? Unless there was something going in there. There's some spring in here, I know it. Right, let's put this down to one side so we don't smash it. Yes, 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 we have it. Ah, but it's smashed. Ah, it's broken there. Oh, what a shame. So this is the bit that clips into those two things on the axle that I showed you, the groove down the actual axle. And uh, yeah, when it goes out, it starts winding itself up and then this wants to pull it back in. I've got to be careful now that it doesn't spring out in my face because there can be quite a bit of power in these things. Now I haven't even got any clocks handy to take the spring out from that. I'm just gonna see how it's attached at the end. Ah, oh, so it is it's attached onto this here. Right, now, would there be enough tension to do away with that bit? Do you know what I mean? To make this bit the end. Maybe, I don't really know what else I can do. Now what I thought I'd be able to do is just cut off the jagged bit and then bend a new little inside bit with some pliers. But unfortunately when you try to bend this because it's so springy, what happens is it just snaps. So it's extremely springy, but at the same time quite brittle. And then when I looked at the original inside bit, 
it was springy on one end and the other side was really pliable. So when I look closely, I realize that this steel, I'm not sure if it is steel, let's call it steel, has been treated in a way to make it springy, but the last two inches or so haven't been treated and that is really pliable. So it allows you to mold the mid end bit into shape to put on the axle, but yet the rest of it is really springy. So unfortunately, I won't be able to just make a new middle bit because there's no way of untreating this steel. It's been heated up or something to get it to be so rock hard and springy, but also brittle. So I haven't really got any choice. I'm thinking I could possibly use the inside of a tape measure, but is it going to be the right length? And also, you know, is it going to be the right thickness and stuff? Is it going to have the right fittings on the end? It's kind of unlikely. So what I'm doing is basically lap where the brake was. I'm going to lap it by about maybe an inch and a half or something. So the whole spring will be ever so slightly shorter, but I don't think it's going to make a difference because it's only an inch and a half over something which looks to be a good foot and a half or so. So uh, I'm going to be placing it together and then I'm going to be wrapping it in copper tape, the slug tape that you get. So it's pure copper. Now it hasn't got a huge amount of strength, but I'm thinking it's pure copper. And if I put enough layers around it, the strength will build up and build up and build up. And then if I put four or five layers on right the way across it, constantly overlapping it by, you know, 50% each time, then if I was to solder on top of the slug tape, the copper tape, that will kind of bond all that tape together because solder is going to sort of, you know, it's a metal, isn't it? So well, it's an alloy. So uh, I think that will possibly give it enough strength. Now, it's never going to be as strong as the original spring but it might just be enough. And if it was to fail, it's not gonna fail in a dangerous way because it's all contained within the walls of this little spool anyway. So the only thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna break. So really, uh, I haven't got much choice, but I think the repair that I've done, I'm really happy with it because even without the solder, I'm giving it quite a tug and bending it and it's not going anywhere. So I think with the solder on top of that, it is gonna be a strong, hopefully lasting repair. So I'm picking up the video now when I'm just finishing off the soldering. Right, there we go. What do you think? Do you think that is gonna hold or not? Who knows, let's get it back together and see. Oh yes, look at that. That looks okay. So now we have to get this middle one. And we've got to make sure it's wrapped around this middle section here. Yeah, I think I'll be able to find that from that side there because I can see the middle bit of the middle bit of the hole. Let's just bend it a little bit more to get it nicely lined up. There we go. So I have to put it under more tension now. So I have to keep winding it this way. So let's undo all this. Whoa, luckily that didn't get me. Right, okay, so I need to go, I need to remember to wind it, I need to go clockwise. So I am gonna put this top back on it now, just in case it does snap in my face. Do you know what? After this, I will be an expert in these 1971 Nintendo periscopes. I'll probably find out though that there's only two available in the world, one for me and one for Elliot. So it will be absolutely no point in having this skill. 
Right, let's see now, is it gonna, it's fully out at the moment. Is it gonna go back in? So far, so good. Come on, keep, it, keep going, come on, you can do it. No, it's struggling. Oh, well, it did do it. It did do it, but look, can you see this? It's like we need one more revolution. Really, we need another revolution for it to be smooth. Do I chance it? Do I chance it because we know it is working? It's just that I know it needs one or possibly two more revolutions, but that could be enough to break the middle bit. Okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. You've seen... No. Uh, oh, I don't know. Let me give it one more go. Hold on. Go up there. It's so nice because look at this. It does it like that. Do you know what? I'm going to leave it because look. It is going round. And who cares about that bit there because the case is on it. It's got strength to push this down flush. No, I think I'd be stupid to do anything else with it because we know it's broken and I've uh, I've done a repair which isn't as good as it was originally. I'm going to leave it like that, but yeah, I think it needed one more revolution, but still. Okay. Oh, I'm so, so happy with this now that it looks like it's going to work. So let's put this handle back on, give it a final little clean because I've got my grubby hands everywhere now. And uh, I think this will be successful. And I think that will be a lasting repair. So you know I mean business when I finish up the video in the kitchen. I have honestly loved doing this one here. That one obviously I didn't have to do anything, it was working. This one here, not only did I have to do a mammoth clean, that spring there is what made it for me. And it's turned out to be, I think, one of my favorite fixes. I love this product and I don't really know why. I think because it's 50 years old, I think it's because it's Nintendo. I think it's because it looks so well made and clever as well. So what I mean by clever is when you go to close it, it all tucks away nicely. I mean, look at that. How good is that? Obviously not as an adult, but imagine now, it's the 1970s, you're a kid, you're out with your friends and you're hiding behind a brick wall or you're playing hide and seek or something and you're behind a brick wall. You can extend this up to peer over it and cheat and see where everybody's running to. Anyway, look, let's finish off the video. So this one here, I'm not gonna show you this because I've already done it. I'm just gonna do one, uh, I'm just gonna launch one marble. There you go, okay, let's do two. Uh, one second. There you go. But anyway, forget about that. It's all about this one here. So you open it up. I'll try and get a camera shot. You open it up and you can adjust it from here. This will adjust the little mirrors on the inside there. You can probably see them moving just now like that. Yeah. And then, oh, this is so nice. Watch this extend. Just gonna hold it up a bit so the mirror's not scraping on the floor. Look how much it goes. Okay, so it doesn't really, it, there's no cut off, it just keeps going until it stops, but look how much that extends. Look at that! That is absolutely huge. Now, to put it back down, I'll put it back down and then I'll put it back up and I'll show you it actually working. So, uh, now, watch this here and you can see it's now going back down. Now, watch the end bit. It's so, so nice how it all tucks away. Here it goes. Ready? Oh, that is just amazing i absolutely love it and look at that that's working now as well oh it's just so 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 good right let me uh finish off the video by seeing if i can get the camera down on the floor and actually using this as a periscope to show you right this is it here i've written a little note just on the cupboard door there so this is it fully extended i'm going to try to show you through just one of the lenses there you go, right, okay. 
So I am at, can you see there the bottom of my taps? And there's the note, but you can't see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just lower, uh, lower it down, let me hold it with the other hand. I'm gonna try to put the, the mirror down, the periscope down a bit, and you'll see it. Oh, come on Vince, get it sorted, hold on. Right, ready now, watch this. Can you see it's lowering? There. But you can't read what it says because it's not going to focus. Oh, oh, yes, you are. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There you go. What does that say? Subscribe to MMV and TRF. My mate Vince and the Retro Future. What a nice way to end the video. I love this thing. Elliot, thank you so much for sending it out to me. I really, it's one of my favorite items. Thank you so much. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I've got so many more items to do in the future. So long may it continue. Take care, everyone.